Hello, my name is Danielle and welcome to this week's Ames Public Library's at home activity. This week we're going to be talking about dinosaurs and paleontology. You might have noticed that I'm dressed a little differently than you might see a librarian dressed and it's because I am dressed like a paleontologist. And a paleontologist is, if you didn't know, a scientist who studies fossils. And fossils can often be found in rocks. So this is a fossil of a fish and it's really little and it's pretty cool. And one cool thing that I learned about fossils and paleontologists when I was doing this research is that sometimes when a paleontologist wants to find out if what they have is a rock or a fossil, you know what they do? They lick it. So don't go licking rocks unless a grown up with you says it's okay, okay? But I just thought that was really cool. I'm not gonna lick this rock because I don't think the person I borrowed it for, from would like it. And I don't think I wanna lick a rock either today. So, um, so there's lots of different kinds of fossils. And one of the main and most exciting kinds of fossils to me that we're going to talk about today are dinosaurs. So dinosaurs were one of the main groups on Earth for over 150 million years. That's a really long time. But the thing is, we don't know too much about dinosaurs because most of them lived a long time ago and are now extinct meaning that they don't live any longer. So people like me, well, not me, but people like a paleontologist go out and look for these creatures, these dinosaurs. And what's cool, the word for dinosaur means terrible lizard, which I think is awesome. But what does it take to be a paleontologist? So it takes some education. You're going to learn, you're going to go to school and learn all sorts about different science and things. But when you're out and you grow up, you can dig up dinosaurs and they are going to use all sorts of different tools. So they might use a hammer because the thing is, these dinosaurs are found in rocks. And so they need sometimes to use very big tools to get to the dinosaurs. So hammers, this is a, called a flat bar, it's like a crowbar, a shovel. These are all tools that paleontologists might use to find those dinosaur fossils. But then when they get to smaller and get to those bones and to find those bits and pieces of all those dinosaurs, Let's see, let's think of some dinosaur words we can think of. Brontosaurus, Tyrannosaurus rex, um, Utah raptor. There's all sorts of dinosaurs that you can learn about. And the cool thing is, paleontologists are still finding new dinosaurs. So you could be out and about and find a new dinosaur. And then that paleontologist might use when you get to that tiny bits of bone, they might use an awl. They've got a couple different kinds of those. See how more delicate they're getting? Or some brushes. So there's lots of different ways for paleontologists to work. And so in our bag this week, we want you to be paleontologists. So we have kind of a rock for you. And a tool, and it's kind of a combination chisel, brush. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tool and chip away and brush away, and you are gonna find your own dinosaur in here. And also in that bag, there is going to be a page that has all the different kinds of dinosaurs that you might find. You're going to find one little toy dinosaur in there, and you're also going to find some information. And you can always come to the library and look up more information on that dinosaur. 
And speaking of looking up more information, I would like to share some great books with you about paleontology and about dinosaurs. So the first book I want to share is called You Can Be a Paleontologist, and it's by Scott D. Sampson. And you might know him from Dinosaur Train, if you watch Dinosaur Train now or when you were littler. But so this is a really great book that kind of just gives you the basics of what being a paleontologist is like and also talks a bit about what it's like to dig for dinosaurs. It's very exciting. There's that one. Then I have another great book called Born to be Giants, How Baby Dinosaurs Grew to Rule the World. And it's by Lita Judge. And I love this book because I always thought that dinosaurs just kind of dropped their babies off and went off and did, you know, their own thing. And some of them did, but some of them took care of their babies. And so this is a really interesting book to learn about that. And then the last book I want to share is a really cool one called oops, The First Dinosaur, How Science Solved the Greatest Mystery on Earth by Ian Lendler. This is kind of a longer, thicker book, so it might be better for older readers. Um, but if you're interested in, in dinosaurs, I think it's a great one. But it just talks about how for a long time, people would just find these books bones and they had no idea how to put them together or what was going on with them and so they ended up just saying okay maybe it's the thigh bone of a giant and so this book is about how this group of scientists and people and after working for years and years finally figured out wait a second these are animals and this is what they might have looked like so it's a really cool book so those are the books I wanted to share, but we have lots of other books that you might want to take a look at because learning about paleontology and dinosaurs is a really cool thing to do with your time. That's what I'm thinking of. So I hope you all have a lot of fun learning about dinosaurs this week, and we will see you next week with another at-home activity.